just share it from your. All right. Page. Welcome everybody. Just share the post. Sean. Um, Yahoo! We're here on Facebook Live. We're a few minutes late. Sorry, traffic, computers, love that. My fault. Um, but it doesn't stop us, right? So we're all here about motivation and mindset, inspiration today, how to really be more successful as an entrepreneur, and nothing stops us, even technology and traffic, right? <laughs> right. Kids' first day of school. Right? It's we crazy. Just have to figure it out. We just have to figure out how. Okay. Right. Today, and you have your kids, and you're like, oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I know. Hey, my kids come in here too, and they know better now to like whisper and like, I can never understand what yeah. she's saying. So, anyways, I'm Katrina Sawa, the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach with jumpstartyourmarketing.com. My friend Sean Douglas with the Success Corps is here. Say hi, Sean. What's happening, everybody? Honored to be here. Katrina is absolutely phenomenal. Oh, you are. Why do you think I have you on? Oh. So we have a super secret today, and um, I've kind of snuck it out a little bit online, but um, Sean is going to be one of my speakers at my event in November. Woohoo! Yeah. Super pumped. I'm super excited. We have been talking about this for so long and we just haven't had the, either the, the dates haven't lined up or I know you speak a lot, you travel a lot, plus I mm -hmm. do too. And it finally worked out where you can come to my event. You can't be there the whole time, I don't think, but that's because you're speaking everywhere. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. on, on November 7th, I have a speaking engagement in Augusta, Georgia for the school bookkeepers association and i'm told they have the greatest personalities so it's going to be a great event for the school bookkeepers and then um so i'll get done in augusta georgia and then come out to your event on the uh eighth or ninth or whatever day i'm gonna be there yeah. and then we'll be in la so we want to yeah. get right into some tips today on um, helping you create more motivation for yourself and mindset but i just wanted to reveal that in case you like the duo that goes on today um, you're going to really want to come to my event and I'll put the link in the chat or in the comments below, but, um, but make sure you Perfect. look at getting there. Uh, it's jumpstartyourbizinaweekend.com. And, um, but I, so a lot of people that are on this probably are following me since it's on my profile. Um, and they know that I love to help people make a lot more money doing what you love. So I look at systems and things that you're doing in your business to be more efficient, more productive, and more profitable. I find those holes and opportunities where you can tweak things or take your business to the next level or maybe charge more so that you can make a lot more money and uh, do a lot more good in this world. And so I'd love to have you do like a little self-introduction, Sean, of what you focus on most with clients and in mm -hmm. life in general. Sure. Uh, so what I focus on is their positioning. A lot of businesses are not positioned correctly in their space. Uh, confused buyers don't buy, you know, so if they don't know what you do or what it is that you could help them with based on your content, based on your profile, based on, you know, them looking at, at the whole person concept, then you know you have an issue you either position yourself in the marketplace or the marketplace will position you mm -hmm. and once that happens you're done if they've positioned you in a way that they receive and perceive you and it's not what you want then you're gonna have to work extra hard either to rebrand or either to um you know create content or create a story that's going to persuade them to think differently but the market never lies. If the market thinks that you do this one thing, then you do this one thing. So, you know, everybody wants to concentrate on, you know, thousand dollars with the design for this logo, you know, and the psychology of what the blues and the reds mean and the whites. And that's cool. But still, if they don't believe what you do is worthy, there's no logo, no name of a company, nothing you're going to do that's going to persuade them. Yeah. And positioning, I mean, we might as well just start in here. Positioning is, comes from really within and your message and your core being. Mm -hmm. It's not just about a logo or a branding. Please don't just go randomly create some kind of random logo until you really have this down. Right. hundred percent. And a lot of times people look at your logo and go, I don't even know what that is. Yeah. Like, I don't, like what is that? You know? Right. And then again, they're so hung up on these colors. I have to get the colors right. The psychology and the whatever, like that's great. 
but really, you know, what is it that you do? You know what I mean? So important. So you know, we're both highly motivated entrepreneurs. I mean, I know oh, some yeah. people that need to go to events to get uplifted and get motivated, and I really avoid all those at all costs. Um, frankly, only because <laughs> not at all costs. I just don't need to go to those kinds of hypey events. I call them hypey. They're great. Don't get me wrong. Some people really need that, but I don't need that because it at the core, I wake up going, Whoo, who do I get to do today? What do I get to who do I get to serve? How can I educate? Yep. What can I teach people? Where can I go to find more people to talk to? And that's what drives me. It's what drives me. And so that yep. is absolutely building a bigger business not necessarily bigger more uh time consuming but bigger more profitable for my family because i know i'm like you it's like family matters it's family and clients and you might have some other things on your bucket list but honestly if i don't do anything besides hang out with my family go on vacations and help a ton of people in the process with their businesses i don't care there's nothing else i really need to do right so 100 percent. yeah What's your big why and how do you think about that? So my my why is that I, you know, I can see this cliche thing, cliche thing like, you know, I want to create an impact and I want people to live an amazing life, but it but it's more than that. I derive value from the value that I give others. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not impacting somebody, if I'm not having a phone call with somebody, if I'm not changing hearts and minds every minute of every day, then I feel like I'm not valuable. And so my why is kind of a selfish why in a sense that for me to be valuable, I must give value. So yeah. I, I almost selfishly give a lot of value and I give a lot of stuff away yeah. on my, on my, you know, social medias and everything. I, I give a lot of stuff away for free, you know? Yeah. I, I give value because it makes me feel valuable when I get people that comment or somebody will send me a message and goes, Oh my God, I loved that post. Like that really hit me. I'm like, awesome. And so if I don't get anybody that says those things, right. And I don't get that affirmation of, you know, uh, that, you know, your post was valuable. Thank you for sharing. Oh my God, this was amazing. Uh, then I, I'm like, crap, that must not have been valuable to people. I got to give more. I got to give more until I get that affirmation moment. And people will tell me like, man, you're giving anything away. Like what else, what else are you going to sell? I'm like, I sell me <laughs> like this, just one little piece right. of, what, of what I'm giving. It's, it's one piece. It's one value. It's one nugget. However, I have more to give and I give away my best stuff. Like I heard, I heard, oh my gosh, I didn't even pay for that. Okay. I pull some of your checklists off the off your Facebook. I watch them. He's like, "Here's everything I do to go get speaking gigs." <laughs> like, what? Copy paste, you know, print it yep. out. Like what? <laughs> yep. So, so think about this for a second. I really want people to take this in because I, this is something that when you hear it, you're gonna be like, "Oh, right." A music star, rock star, whoever in the music industry does not lead with their worst stuff. They lead with their number one. They lead with their best music. And then you buy the remaining album. You buy what's left that they haven't given away. On the, maybe, maybe that album has number ones or number twos. You know, uh, maybe it's got three awesome songs that they've released as a number one hit. You know what I mean? But you are buying the rest of it. Yeah. In business, people do it backwards they lead with their with their worst item first and they lead with their i don't care if i give this away it's fine and they save their best stuff can you imagine if they reversed it they gave their best stuff away and then everything else that they still have people would want to buy i'm mm -hmm. just saying maybe that's my theory but it's well, worked for me so far yes and don't go creating bad stuff of course because we don't want to right, right, right. 100 <laughs> i don't think you know if you're really good at what you do you're not going to have that problem but yes, right. I highly believe that too. And we do it in different ways, you and I. Actually, you give away stuff like here, you know, on a Facebook post or a blog post. And I do that sometimes, but I forget sometimes. I do it in my email newsletters and my blog. Oh, yeah. I always do it on social media um, in that 
extent of a way, I have lots of free things you can get on the website behind an opt-in box, right? But mm -hmm. you're right. Maybe I should just, blur, you know, blurt it all out on a, on a social media. And everyone well, I, do. I, yeah. I still, I mean, I give away some stuff in an email, but I... I, I, I do need to get better about doing email. Yeah. I'll do it maybe two or three times a week. Um, usually like a Tuesday. Cause I, I did, you know, some research and somehow somewhere, some research <laughs> study said that Tuesday is the best day to, you know, to do, uh, to do email, right? Like it's the best day. I'm like, cool. Uh, I'll try it and see what happens. Uh, usually Sunday night, my, my newsletter goes out for the week. So Sunday night, because the first thing people do on Monday morning is check their email, you know, so I send out a lot of my like business. Um, if I want to speak somewhere at a corporate place, I'm not open on a Sunday, but the first thing that that VP of marketing or VP of sales does is open up their, their uh, email. So what I do is usually between 10 o'clock and midnight on a Sunday night, I send all my emails out to the people that I want to email. That way I'm the first or one of like top five uh, emails that they see in their inbox on Monday morning. So that's the strategy that's worked for me yeah. and it's worked really well. Otherwise, you know, uh, like Friday is like the worst day to email, I guess, uh, based on the, the same research study. It seems like Tuesday yeah. and Wednesday are the best. So it's like Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. I'm good three times a week, but, um, you know, three times a week. Well, people are probably going, what you email three times a week. That's too many for me. But anyways, <laughs> we're not going to go down that road right now. Right. But Let's go right. bigger picture a little bit because um, you said your why is to receive value. So give value and you receive value from giving value. And, yeah. um, and I feel similar to that too because it's not like we need validation almost, but um, a lot of people need validation. There's nothing wrong with needing validation, but right. it is sometimes what drives us sometimes so and that it's great to get great comments and mm -hmm. um, connections and have people like and you know love your posts on social media and all that but it is completely different when someone validates you by paying for your services right, right? yeah and so we yep. I, I want to just make that de definition here between like give, 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 get validation and not make any money in the back of your business because that is not a good business model. Right. Right. So, so um, right. And, and, and a funny thing to do. And the funny thing is, is that, you know, like, uh, like I was asked there, um, you know, in a Facebook group, you know, there's a bunch of speakers and stuff. And they're like, I see you've done TEDx. What would you do about you know getting on TEDx? Like, how does that work? And I was like, well, I have a I have a system, and or well, not really a system, but but a way of doing it. But I also you know have a service for that too. And they're like, well, could you post it? I'm like, absolutely. So I said, here's my TEDx stuff, and then if you wanna if you wanna uh, get on TEDx, then you know let me know, and we'll have a conversation about it and whatever. And I've already got three calls scheduled, you know. So I've got these calls scheduled, and I gave away a little bit, and said this is kind of what I do. And they enjoyed it. And then they're going to get on a call with me to see if I'm the right fit that they need to be working with. So yeah. give the value and then have the call to action. If you want to know more, if you want to have a deeper dive, um, check out my website, you know, whatever. But a lot of people, and especially on LinkedIn right now, a lot of people are like, hey, Katrina, nice to see you on LinkedIn. I have a service for you. And you're automatically being sold to. It's like, dude, first of all, you didn't, you didn't even like at all uh, cultivate the no like and trust factor, but you haven't given me any value whatsoever. I have no idea what you do and mm -hmm. I'm already being sold to. That's not what builds relationships. Yeah. You know, it's giving value and knowing that you are a, a person of value. And then once they get to know what you do and they like what you do, then they can trust that you have their best interest at heart. Because I know a lot of people that have, have paid, you know, five, 10 and 20 K for coaches and got burned. And so now we're all kind of gun shy about, do I hire a coach? Do I not hire a coach? I don't know. And, and so I just, I want to give value so that people understand like, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. And I'm tagged in a lot of groups. I'm tagged on a lot of pages. Yeah. I mean, I'm tagged daily, daily I'm tagged. And, uh, and it's because people know that I know what I'm talking about. And then yeah. with the content marketing strategy, people, you know, they want to do business. I, I've literally given a lot of my stuff away for free this year and I've made more money than the past two years and I've worked with more people than I have last year. So it's been, it's been absolutely incredible and absolutely amazing. 
That's really, really good to know because a lot of people don't understand that uh, that can truly happen. And yeah, right. is that a bird or a baby? <laughs> That's a baby who is very mad right now. Oh, you need to check your baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> no, she's all good. <laughs> oh. Nope, she's good. And, and is your wife Candy there? Oh yeah, no, she oh, okay. uh, she took the other kids. Okay, how many kids do you have? Four. Four kids, and you're four doing kids, but from home. But the, uh, the the she's almost two, and she is absolutely um, the rambunctious one. She's all over the place, which is which is great. <laughs> That's awesome. So it's not the terrible two; it's just the rambunctious two. Oh yeah, yeah, but she's awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, we love family men. We love uh, the fact that you love to give. Um, what do you say about when we're talking about being motivated? Like some people just don't want to get up in the morning because they aren't sure what to do or they don't believe in themselves enough. They mm -hmm. don't feel worthy. Maybe they don't feel like they have a purpose or passion. Those are some of the things I know that motivate me. And how do we get them to tweak what they're thinking or how they're tweaking a little bit? In order to wake up all excited instead, how do you? Well, you know, so first of all, I mean, you know, we've heard it before. You got to have a why. You got to have a why for what you do, right? But more importantly, it's what are you building? What are you doing? What are you creating? What, like, what is that? Not even a why, but what's what's the reason behind it? You know, why most people think entrepreneurship is cool or they think, well, I'm going to be a speaker because I have a story to tell. Or you see the ones that, you know, this week they're the top paid speaker. And then in two weeks, they're the CBD oil salesman. And then a couple of weeks later, there are this speaker about this one thing. And then a couple of weeks later, they're, oh, I'm going to build a business and host events. And then the other week, they're this other person, like they're chasing these short term gains instead of staying with it and sticking with it. They haven't found their thing. Once you find something that lights you up, once you find something that lights your soul on fire, you can't think of anything else that you would rather do. That is when the magic happens because most people are chasing money and they're chasing validation. They're chasing results. They're yeah. not chasing what fulfills them. And when you chase what fulfills you and you fill your cup first, you can then from the overflow of that passion and that motivation and that inspiration and that love and every other positivity word that you can gratitude. Once you fill your cup up with all that stuff and it starts overflowing with abundance, then and only then can you give back to those, those people that need you the most. Yes. I totally believe that. I use that same analogy. We got to fill your own cup first until it overflows and then serve from your saucer. And too many yep. people serve from when they're not even full yet. And then you're not fulfilled at all. You've got this hole in your, in yourself, you know? Right. And then, so it is more than just a why it's why and determination. It's mm -hmm. getting clarity. I always say getting clarity on what you're selling. Cause if, Yep. And when I say selling, I'm like, you, how you're uh, transforming people? What's your promise? Like when they come and work with you or yes. buy your stuff, what's the promise yep. information that you yep. provide? When you're clear on that and it's something that just is, comes from the gut, then that's when the motivation, you don't even have to think about getting motivated. And you don't need those hype of motivating seminars anymore. Although, you know, some of us can speak at them, so they're so good. Right, but, right. But yeah, it's, and so if you're not feeling, I guess I want to say that what you're doing is from the gut, it's from that instinctual, pur mm -hmm. purposeful place, then you really want to come and talk to somebody, I say, because it doesn't always just come to you. Sometimes you need to brainstorm around in a circle first with a bunch of ideas and then go, Ding, here's the idea, here's what it is. Right? Do you ever? Oh yeah. Yeah. That happens. Yeah. You know? I, so I work. I work with people. Sometimes they they'll come. They'll got this one business, and um, like 
like for example, I was working with this with this uh, one lady, and you know she works with all these corporations and stuff in like this certain industry, you know. And she's like, well, I mean, I've 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 gone in, I've I've done infrastructure because a lot of the CEOs, their infrastructure isn't isn't the right way, it doesn't look the right way, it's not operating the right way, they're hemorrhaging money, you know, whatever. So I've gone in and I've kind of reorganized some things. And once they have their systems and processes and infrastructure in place, then they can grow and scale and all that stuff. She didn't know how to translate that into a keynote talk. Well, how do I talk about that? I'm like, well, here's what I would do. And here's what I told her. And she was like, I'm not sure I really want to talk about it. I'm like, well, whatever you do, how does that translate into somebody else's life? What do you like? If you're going to do a keynote speak, right? If you're going to be, be the keynoter, you need to translate what you do into 45 to an hour. She goes, oh my gosh, like I could never do that. So what we decided was that what's the three reasons why a company fails not capital or like like really like why is that company failing because well what i've seen is that the ceo just doesn't know something like he i mean he doesn't know what he doesn't know i'm like okay what are the top 10 things that that ceo needs to know so she listed them I'm like number one ch checklist you're going to give that that person a checklist at the event now you can grow your email list by giving them things to download before the event like download my 10 point check list that will let you know like these are the top 10 things that ceos need to know and then what happens is the second thing you're going to talk about is the infrastructure because you said infrastructure always is is not there it's failing so what 10 things does that ceo need to have inside of their business considered infrastructure what does that look like so she created another 10 questions and so she created two checklists that were that were really um checklist for that CEO to know exactly what needed to be in their business so that I know that I have a healthy, scalable running business. So when that CEO takes a checklist, like, yep, that's a yes. That's it. Oh, that's a no. I didn't know I needed that. Holy crap. I said, so now you've combined everything, you know, into these 20 questions. And then your third main point would be, how do you combine all of that together and know that you have a successful, healthy business? What does that look like? And so she came up with another 10. Like, if you can check these boxes, in my experience, between two and $20 million a year business, this is what you should have. If you don't have these things, then, you know, like, and she even had on there like workout days or mindfulness days or self-care days. You know, if the CEO is working seven days a week, 18 hours a day, you're going to get burned out. Yeah. You know, and so that's what we came up with. And it's a hit, you know, people are like, oh, I need this. And now she's completely fired up. She's loving it. She's like, yes. Oh, my God. It makes so much sense. And she's happy. And then that makes me happy. I, you know, I worked with her on it. We worked with it together. We brainstormed. She's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I'm glad you think it's amazing. I feel better. She feels better. And everybody's a win win. That's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you mentioned speaking, and, and that's interesting because I know you do a lot of paid speaking gigs, and mm -hmm. uh, so you look for corp companies and schools around the nation, right, and wherever yep. that you can yep. go and speak at for a fee, for a fee, so that's part of your yep. business model, whereas I do a lot of free speaking, which is a marketing strategy. Um, right. But when you say the three things, uh, it reminded me something that I learned this year, 17 years into my business, that I mean, I've been doing talks like the 10 marketing strategies and how to get started speaking and all these other things I would do, all the how to type stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was reminded this January that I really needed to come from my core and tell the three critical keys of why I do what I do, like the really yeah. deep down stuff that I don't always talk about. So I actually right. revised my whole talks to to really go through those keys now and it's not all just practical tactical it's it's bigger picture it's much deeper into me and and so so important so um i just wanted to throw that out there because so many people um struggle with what to speak about and that's something that really comes kind of easy for you and i and it's not that it comes easy but it we know what to do we can exactly. get a talk booked and go right into what we need to tell the person. Yep. And it's one of those, it is, it just comes easy. Where it's one of right. the hardest things for a lot of people to do. But you know what? It's the biggest marketing strategy that I use. It yep. is probably the number one thing you can do to increase your business and your cash flow, frankly. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 
So one of the um, things I wanted to bring up before we dive into maybe tips on mindset shifting okay. is your podcast, because you have an amazing podcast. People need to listen to it and tell us what it is and where to find it. I put your Facebook page on Perfect. in the comments, but um, yeah. This is this is my my passion project. You know, I, I just want to I just want to make a statement real quick. Um, there are so many people that get into podcasting to make money and it, and it hurts my heart. When people do that, I'm gonna get into podcasting to make millions of dollars. That just, I don't know. It just hurts my heart, you know. I, I and it's just my my personal, you know, yeah. thinking. You know, it's just yes, it's a great money maker, and yes, I get paid for for advertisers and you know different things for my show, sure. But I I my show Life Transformation Radio, I do that for everybody else. Life Transformation Radio is all about our transformation. It's where we tell the stories of why we're doing what we're doing, highlighting that transformational moment that changed our lives and how we use it to then transform others. It is the most absolute way that I can serve my audience by giving them the, the behind the scenes, behind the scenes. You know, it's like that big iceberg. We see the worry, regret, troubles, bankruptcy, um, all the bad negative stuff that nobody wants to share at parties and, and, and on social, nobody's talking about the struggle. And I have $19 in my bank account because, you know, I I'm a struggling artist, <laughs> you know, like I I've spent my last dollar on, you know, uh, on, on a 99 cent free plus shipping offer because I needed this one book or something, you know, this 99 cent ebook. Everybody wants to show them the tip of the iceberg. Well, my guests that come on the show are entrepreneurs, speakers of business owners, other podcasters, authors who are amazing at what they do. And they share the, I was homeless. I tried to kill myself. I was sleeping in my car. I had one guy come on the show. He's like, man, I'm sleeping. I'm, I, I live with my parents. I live with my parents because I am a bachelor and it makes no sense for me to build my business. And, you know, my parents are in their seventies and eighties, you know, and they're going to be gone soon. Like I'm trying to spend every moment I can. I actually gave up a million dollar home to go move in with my parents because I bought them, you know, a, 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 a lavish home. Okay. And now, and now we all live together because they're going to be gone soon. And, and my family is important to me. And I was like, that's cool. So he altered his lifestyle so that he can spend more time with his mom and dad. But the guy's still a millionaire, but he, but he sold his million dollar home, got rid of his parents' home, you know, and now they have a joint home with a, you know, in-law suite and all that other stuff. I'm like, that's pretty cool. He's like, I love my family. But it's the behind the scenes things. Everybody wants to know like, well, what did you do? And who did you talk to? And what was that marketing strategy? But it goes deeper than that. It's that mindset shift that you're talking about. It's the, I was broke and homeless. And what the hell did I do to get over that? That's why I love the show. And the guests, I've had famous guests. I've had the Make-A-Wish founder, Frank Shankowitz on the show. I've had Bruce Buffer from the UFC on the show. Zig Ziglar's son, Tom Ziglar. And then I've had people that nobody knows. And some of those people are my highest rated shows. Yeah, yeah. cool. It's great to have the famous people. But when you have heartfelt cancer survivor stories, you know, on your show, it just it doesn't matter who you are. Those tend to resonate, you know, those overcomings and, and all that. But it's the stories about, about what was that transformational moment that changed your life? What was that uptick, right? We all want to, we don't care about what happened here. We don't care about what happened here. We want to know what made us get there. We want to know like, what did you do to get to that moment? And that's what I do. I hone in on what was that uptick swing? When exactly did you stop making a thousand dollars a month and start making $10,000 a month, $50,000 a month? What was that one moment? You know, and uh, and I speak at a lot of different events. I spoke at PodFest this year, Outliers Podcast Festival, um, New Media Summit. I'm always at New Media Summit. I'll be there uh, next month in San Diego. Uh, Mid Atlantic has a has a podcast event. DC podcast. I didn't get picked for that one, but that's okay. Um, but I speak at three, four different podcast events, you know, every year and, and, and the same things are happening. The conversations that are taking place, one, they're free and two, it's, it, it's becoming the new radio. It's the new media. So you got to be taking advantage of it. And we're going to be doing a whole panel about podcasting at my event in November. I'm bringing in some different types of people, people who run their own networks on radio and, and podcast channels.
that you can become a part of so you can run your own show. I'm also going to talk about how to become guests. And, and I've got, you know, Sean's not only speaking with the talk, but he's going to be on that panel of a bunch of other people as well. Like, uh, Raven, the talk show Maven is going to be on that panel. Oh, she's and, awesome. I know. She talks about TV shows and she yeah. has you and stuff like that. She's interviewed some of the biggest people on the planet. And so yeah. it's just going to be amazing. There's always new content at my events. So um, if you've been before, we moved it from Sacramento to LA and we have all new, all new speakers and content. So it's going to be super fun. So I put your cool. podcast link in there too, so they can find you on Facebook and your podcast. So uh, I want to get dive just real quick because I don't know how much time we have left here on Be Live before they shut us down. So <laughs> mindset strategies, mindset strategies to stay motivated, right? Because sometimes we're all gung ho and then just technology fails or something really bad happens or a client cancels or something like that and we get deflated. We get in a funk. You ever feel like that? I'm sure you have. We all oh, have. yeah. So what helps you get back out of that funk? Or So <laughs> what a great question. Not only has this question been asked by a lot of people like, you know, what's your mindset look like, you know, and what we hear is that people have, you know, successful people have a morning routine, you know, either the, you know, the Hal, Hal Elrod's, you know, miracle yeah. morning, yeah. or you've got a mindfulness and meditation, whatever. Um, you know, this past week was, was one of the lowest points of my family's life so far because our favorite dog died and, um, uh, it was like completely unexpected. Like she was sick. She wasn't feeling well. She was lethargic and then she was throwing up and then she died like all uh. in like a 48 hour period. I'm like, what the hell just happened? Uh. So my whole family has been distraught this whole past week and we just got her ashes back. And it was just like, like, I can't, like I had to cancel the show. You know, I ended up doing, I didn't have doing a, doing one of my shows, you know, cause I, I can't even concentrate. Like, how do I, like, how do I get, it, it's hard. Right. Mm -hmm. So number one, what I have found is it's okay to not be okay. I just, let's just, it's okay to not be okay. Don't ever think that what you're feeling, this, this deflatedness, this imposter syndrome, like it's okay to feel that way. But after about 10 minutes or so, you need to have a strategy to get yourself out of that depression and out of that low moment and out of the funk, right? So it's okay to feel whatever it is. That's just mindfulness. That's just emotional intelligence. But the mindset that you have is, is I have to make this happen no matter what. I have to make this happen no matter what. So figure out what grounds you. Figure out what connects you to that one thing. Why do you do what you do? A why is great, but have something. Have, I don't know, a picture. Um, have, you know, go hug your spouse. You know, go spend time with somebody. Go clear your head. Go on a walk. Whatever. Pretend that you are a kite. Okay. You're the kite. What is on the other end of the string? Who is holding the end of the string? What's holding the end of the string? What grounds that kite from flying away? Right. Ooh. The winds are, are blowing you all around. You're swaying back and forth. You're getting tattered and torn in life. Okay. What makes you not lose it? What makes you grounded? And so if it's your kids, if it, you know, for me, it was the dog, like the dog was what grounded me. So now my grounding now, now what? Well, my wife is awesome. My kids are awesome. Like, what do I do? And so we, we, you know, we spend time with each other. We do things together, but it's, it's the work that I'm doing in the world that really kept pushing me forward. It's like, I got to keep going, you know? So it's, it's a little bit of discipline. It's a little bit of like what grounds and centers you. Right. But it's, it's really the support system. That's going to keep going. Affirmation is my love language mm. affirmation. I, I love affirmations. And mm. so, you know, people were like, man, I'm here for you. I got personal message. I got phone calls. Like that fuels me. You know, I'm like, I am loved. I am enough. I am, you know, whatever it is, you know, I'm intentionally and wonderfully made whatever it is that, that grounds and centers you, you know, I have strong affirmations, and so all of that combined just kept me going and was fueling me to stay positive as much as I could. That's awesome. Yeah, my dogs are grounding for me too. I can always go and hug on them and love on them if I'm not having a good day. And they'll just listen and love you no matter what. Um, yeah. No sound for you. 
Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so one of the things I know that helps or is a deterrent to keeping a positive mindset is some of our people around us. I call them Ooh, your top yeah. people. And so you clearly don't have any in your household. Um, I don't have any in my household anymore. I used to with uh, when I was married to my spouse. Yep. And even my dad at some level was positive and negative constantly. And mm -hmm. um, and when he passed, I was I was pretty free. I was pretty free because of the negative Nellies in my life. Anybody else who would be negative was a somebody that I could choose to be with or not be with, right? It's kind of hard to choose, you know, parents and siblings and things like that. Um, so, you know, one of the things I have people look at when they're kind of in a funk is who are they surrounding themselves with, right? And who's who's inside the bubble? Because sometimes our bubble pops and everything comes in that negative energy that negative naysaying like well maybe you should go get a job this business isn't for you after all that kind of crap right so if you can't keep the bubble around your energy as an entrepreneur then you've got to really make sure you're managing those relationships um, mm -hmm. pretty well what do, do you have any insight on um, topic? oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh yeah. I call it your board of directors. Ah. If every major company and every major CEO has board meetings to talk about long-term growth, long-term sales, mm -hmm. the vision of the company. They're having these board meetings and then they have a board surrounding them, making sure that the CEO is sticking to that vision. He's yeah. sticking to the long-term goals that he has set. And the board members are really there to, you know, not like take the company from Steve jobs, you know, but to make sure that he really, has that best interest of the workers, right? the employees, the, the, the goals, the vision, money, the, everything. And so your board of directors is there to guide you and steer you and motivate you and mentor you all at the same time. So if you don't have a board of directors for your life, then you need to get one. And everybody in common has five areas and they are wealth and finances, health, personal relationships, professional development, and spirituality. We all share these five commonalities. And so place two to three people inside of each of those. Here's a problem. Everybody's like, I got to buy this course and this course and this course and this course and this one and this one. And pretty soon you've got 15, 20 courses in your email that you haven't even opened. You've signed up for 11 teen webinars. You haven't done any of them because you're following too many people on social. Find three people. Yeah. Pick me, Katrina, and one other person. That's all you need. <laughs> right, <laughs> but, right? But, but you know, follow Gary Vee, Tony Robbins, Greg Cardone. That's it. Follow three people. Follow whoever it is that you want to follow inside of your industry, the top three people, and only follow them. For example, Dave Ramsey says, debt is dumb, cash is king. Grant Cardone says, leverage all of the debt. Give me all of the debt. I love debt and other people are going to pay off my debt. I love debt. So you have two people that are, that are, that are in the industry as the influencers and the experts with two contrasting differences inside of their, inside of their messaging. Who do I follow? Pick one and stick with it. So yeah. many people are trying to be influencers today. There's a thousand million gajillion Freaking people on Instagram and LinkedIn and Facebook are all trying to be influencers. Pick somebody on your board of director, put somebody there who is doing what you want to do at the level you want to do it at making the money that you want to make. That should be the determining factor. Do what they were doing at the level that they're operating at, at the lifestyle they're living at and the money that they're making. If one of those people that are an influencer are not doing those things, then you don't follow them and you disregard them. You follow three to four people tops in each of those areas. Who's the best in the wealth and the health and the personal relationships, like figure out, you know, Gary Chapman for, from five love languages. Maybe you follow him. Maybe you follow some other relationship expert, you know, uh, for, for personal development, for spirituality. Maybe it's your pastor. Maybe it's the Bible. Maybe it's the, whatever the universe wants you to, you know what I'm saying? So you follow these two, three, four people and you get rid of everybody else. And that is your board of yeah. directors. Yes. 
Preach it. Yeah. No, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> because too many people are, they're signing up for all these little random things. And the key here though, is make sure that the person, people that you're following are not one and done. Okay. One right. and done means they did it one time and now they're teaching it, but they're not really consistent with the thing that they're teaching to do it over and over and over again. So have, make sure that those people have proven track records and whatever for a longer period of time, please. Not one and doneers. One and doneers think they're the biggest influencers out there and you see them all over social media, but they've only done the thing once and now they're trying to teach you and make a million dollars teaching you the thing that they did once. And they're yep. not even doing the thing anymore that they were doing it because now they're just teaching you. That drives yep. me absolutely batty. And sometimes you can't tell who those people are, but you have to dig a little deeper. Yep. Um, oh yeah. And as you get to know the industry and you get to know the people inside that industry, just alone this year, I have been like, I was in Austin, Texas, you know, for, for outliers. And I had a conversation with somebody, you know, and I, I mean, huge influencer. I'm talking like, I'm like, dude, you're the bomb.com. You invented that website and come to find out like, what? Like everything that I've ever thought about that person, because that's what they put online was a complete, I mean, I can't say complete. I'd say about 75%, not, not all the way true. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. they kind of, they kind of have a nine to five job and you're like, I thought you were like, like an amazing entrepreneur. Like I thought you were like, I thought you were crushing it. I thought you were, mm. what, wait a minute now, you know? And I tell like, look, I'm in the military. You know, I've got a nine to five, but like I'm full-time active duty. Every business I've ever created that's gone to six figures I've done in my spare time, in my yeah. off duty time, you know? And so raising a family, building businesses, I built four and, and, and doing, you know, this, everything else. That's what I love to do. But I thought that, oh, full-time entrepreneur tour in the world, come to find out they got a nine to five job. I was like, and I'm not mad at them. I'm like, I wonder how many other people are talking about how they're this phenomenal entrepreneur, but like you work at FedEx. Like I, I blew my, I was almost heartbroken for this person. I'm like, Oh, I thought you were amazing. And I, and I still do. I think they're an absolute incredible person, but I feel like, but they're maybe, not really right that you, yeah. Like I feel yeah. like I've been duped. I feel like, like you have great information and, and, and your information has helped me. But now I got to figure out, like, did he really do that information? Like, did he really do it? Or did he pay for a course, then regurgitate the information from that course onto social and pass it off as their own? So now it's like that credibility, integrity. I'm like, I was like, I don't know. And like, I was like almost heartbroken. I'm like, oh, I yeah. thought you were amazing. <laughs> well, and I had you know? a mentor one time who I followed purposely because not only was she making a lot of money doing what she loved and she created this amazing lifestyle, but she had this amazing family and husband and they were on stage together and they would show the best relationship and come to find out they were on the verge of breaking up and she had another guy on the side the whole time. And I'm like, what? Like, Oh my God, that just like wow. about love in your life and money in your business. Right. Family, entrepreneur. And that just shattered my whole thought process behind it all because she was faking, she was faking being yep. a really successful married couple doing this thing together. And yep. that was just, I, that is like the single defining moment that made me really open my eyes to the world of coaching. Oh yeah, and me too. I'm like, yep. what? Okay, now too. I'm really gonna look at the fine tooth comb behind the curtains. It's so true. Oh, yeah. Look behind there. Now, I'm not saying we're all perfect. We are not perfect. Right. And do we um, hide anything from the public? Very little, I'm sure, you and I, for sure. But, right. uh, <laughs> you know, it's, but you do have to be careful. And, yep. please, you know, so, yep. but your due diligence, you know, do your research. Yeah. You know, you know, if, 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 a, if a coach or a speaker, you know, gets mad that, well, can I talk to your past clients or can I, you know, like, do you get mad that Wendy's wants some, some references for your 17 year old when he gets a job, like, like jobs want references, right? So why can't I say, well, let me get,
two of your clients that you've worked with. Let me talk to them. Yeah. Why would you need those? Uh, mm -hmm. Because I'm doing my due diligence. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm vetting who I'm going to give my money to. You know, I have no problem. Like, who do you want to talk to? <laughs> like, what person you want to talk to? Like, I'll give you to anybody. You right. know, even when they're speaking, you know, they're like, can I have three references? I'm like, yeah, here's three events that I spoke at in the past. Here you go. You right. know, like, I want them to vet me. Like, heck yeah. Like, do your due diligence. That's that's great business. I agree. You know, but people get pissed. They get like, no, what? I would never. Like, <laughs> okay. Oh, my goodness. All right. So a couple other mindset tweaks. I know sometimes it's hard to get over is um, being, uh, realizing that building this kind of a business, the kind of business that really could pay you a, a lot of money, but give you lots of rewards and benefit as well as impact a ton of people, whether you work 10 hours a week or 40 or 60, it's, that's not the point. The point right. is that we have to realize that it's going to take probably more time than people realize to really ramp up. That's one of right. the biggest um, mindset shifts I see, especially with anybody in their 20s and 30s, for sure. <laughs> but right. sometimes people think they're going to just be overnight success and overnight making money. And then when they're not, they're disappointed. And when they're disappointed, then they're deflated. When they're deflated, they're not motivated. So right. getting wrapping your head around the fact that we have to realize that building, a, I mean, shoot, it took me... It was two thousand. It took me six years to hit six figures in my business. Now I'll tell you why. The why is because I was too stubborn to listen to a lot of my coaches, and I thought I knew right. more. Yet I was paying them, so I would yeah. Yeah, doing it all over again. That wouldn't happen to me because I would be a lot more open to the right. right. What are your thoughts on, you know, being more realistic with your expectations? Yeah. I love this. I love this. First of all, let, let's talk about realism. Yeah. So my realism and somebody else's realism isn't even in the same ballpark. Like I am going with Elon Musk to Mars to colonize Mars. And I, and I was told over the weekend, just having a conversation with someone, this is what this guy tells me. Okay. Here's how, you know, you have amazing thinking. This guy literally we're sitting here having a conversation and I was like, Oh man, I want to go to Mars with Elon. Like I want to go colonize it. How badass would that be? You know what he tells me? He goes, I could see that. I could see you giving the first TEDx talk on Mars. I'm like, oh, dude, that would be so cool. And then we got into a conversation about what that would look like. Like, how would that happen? Like, what would you talk about? Like, but somebody is on that level, like talking about giving a TEDx talk in Mars. Most people are like, I hope I hit six figures this year. I really hope I, you know, they set their sights too low. So I believe that, you know, in, in smart goals, it talks about having a realistic goal. That is a whole bunch of crap. Have a goal that makes people laugh. If your goal is not throat punching somebody and setting them down on their butt and they're not making fun of you, it is not high enough. Once you've reached that, okay, then I want you to set levels, okay, where what it looks like. Like, for example, set the goal. Right? Like, oh, this is this is really high. This is making people laugh. Like, you'll never do that. I'm like, I've reached my level. Okay. Because Les Brown said, if you shoot for the moon and you miss, at least you'll hit the stars. So you need to set a goal that makes people laugh. That makes people like your goal throat punches them. Right. <laughs> then, <laughs> then once you've reached that level, whatever that level is, start setting goals, little mini goals at that, right? So you start where you are, then you set one goal and another goal and another goal. And each of those goals, each of that level builds on itself. Set yourself a timeline. In 10 years, I will do this one thing. But in the meantime, I'm going to do 10 things that get me, or I'm going to accomplish 10 levels that get me to that 10th level, which is my one thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Set micro levels. Whoever said that the million dollar mark is the benchmark, I want to hunt down and punch in their throat. <laughs> Just because you make a million dollars a year does not mean that you are successful. If I own five, let's say I own four houses. I own four houses at $250,000 each. That means that I'm a net worth millionaire because I own four houses at $250,000 each. I'm a net worth millionaire. However, comma, I am also in debt $1 million. Right. <laughs> right. 
I mean, yeah. let's think about that. I own four $250,000 houses. I'm a net worth millionaire. I can legitimately call myself a millionaire. However, you're also in debt a million dollars. My success, my version of success is getting over the 1% mark, which is in America, $400,000. If I'm earning $400,000 a year in net profits, so maybe I have a million dollar business, but I'm only raking in 400,000. Once I earn $400,000 a year, I consider myself a legitimate success. Now, the highest that I've gotten was almost 300K. Mm. That's the highest I've ever gotten. And, and I put out there, like, I'm not a millionaire. I haven't built three, four, and $500,000 businesses. The most I've ever received was about 260 some odd thousand. And that was way back, like 2005, 2006, 2007. Like that was, you know, one of the first businesses ever created, but <laughs> the business that my wife and I created, uh, with storage units and everything else. I mean, we hit six figures, you know, we were four, extra $4,000 a month in profits. I mean, it was great. <laughs> and then she got mad at me because I'd spend it all. <laughs> I was like, but I got to reinvest in the business. But it was like, if you're not setting your own benchmarks, right. And you're not scheduling your success, then nobody else is either. And for someone to tell you what your success looks like is just a bunch of crap. Yeah, no, I agree. And so the goal is to make sure you set big enough goals and we'll tell you if we think they're big enough or if you're kind of being a pussy and you're setting them too low. <laughs> <laughs> right. And sometimes you have to stretch your comfort zone a little bit, get outside your comfort zone in order to know that that's possible or even believe in somebody else's belief that it's possible. But you need to do that because the bigger you can set your – now, you don't want unrealistic goals. Like I had a coach one time when I, had, I wasn't even making $100,000 a year, and he told me to set a goal of $5 million for the year. And I'm like, that's just – my my brain was like, well, it's not gonna happen. Right. And, you know, so it, it wasn't internally. There was no way. You know, but I'll tell you because you might get lucky and hit a million. They probably like set this astronomical five million, and then if you hit a million, you're like, hey, you hit a million dollars, and like, okay, I so mean, I must, I must tell you, that's the year that I hit six figures the very first time. <laughs> you know, so there you go. So there you go. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Set a laughable goal. Really Set was. a laughable goal and then reverse engineer. Exactly. And I got to where my goal actually was. That's so, awesome. I love yeah, that. It's pretty funny. That's awesome. All right. Very well, cool. We should probably wrap this up. And I just, how can they find more information from you besides going to your Facebook, making sure they sure. follow you, look mm -hmm. at your podcast. What kinds of things do you have? Yeah. So I, uh, you know, on my website at uh, the success core, C O R P S, the success uh, I'm, I'm going to give your audience something. Okay. So I have a $47 ebook that I'm going to give away for free to this audience. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do if you go to a bit.ly link, B I T dot L Y forward slash get book to speak capital G capital T capital B capital S or get, get book to speak G P T S. So cap capital G capital B capital T capital S get book to speak. So at that bit.ly link, you can go, or you could just go to my website, the success click on the link where it says the get booked to speak strategy guide. There's a code that you type in free for me, all capital letters free for me. That is my no BS, no fluff guide to get booked to speak. Speakers have made thousands of dollars by paying for this book for $47. I'm going to give it away for free today. Awesome. So when we're done here, you'll put that link in the chat because I tried to type it in and I couldn't get it. So I will definitely, definitely do that. Okay, good. So that's awesome. You guys definitely want to grab that. And even if you don't think you need to be speaking, you do. So let's just get that out of the way because this is speaking. The networking event is speaking. Giving your 30-second commercial speaking. Getting people in a sales conversation is speaking. So everybody needs to be speaking, whether you do it on stage or not, frankly. Yep. 
Um, and there are strategies that he and I both teach different types of things. Um, so yeah, we'd love to be two of the three people that you follow. So make sure you are paying attention. Uh, that is one of my biggest pet peeves is people don't pay enough attention these days to the people that they're following because you're following too many people and you can't, you physically can't pay as much attention as you need to, to some of the things that people are sending out. So, you know, um, check them out. I have a webinar coming up later this week too, all about pricing for profits. So if you really are, you know, and charging for what you're worth, so that's coming up on, I want to say Thursday and, uh, you can find out more on the Facebook page or get on the email address or get on my email as well. Um, but please come and see us in November in LA. I really, really, really want you to come to the jumpstart your business a weekend event that I do. I've been hosting since 2009, my live events, and there are three days of just power packed working on your business type stuff. So honestly, we cover so much from A to Z that it's it'll blow your mind. And, and though people make money at my events. So I talk about easy yes offers. So like this $47 ebook that he has, that he's giving for free, Mostly, I help people create those kinds of things. So when you go to a live event or conference, you got money in the bank because people are like, "Ooh, I want that," and you have people sign up and get paid right there. You don't wait until the follow up and all that. So there's ways yep. to make money at my events. You're gonna get in the hot seat, perhaps. You're gonna learn all kinds of things about podcasting, marketing, your website, uh, automation, how to free up your time so that you can actually reach a lot more people. How to, you know, manage your business working from home with babies and right <laughs> with an almost two year old who just randomly walks on the house screaming. I think she has Tourette's. It's all right. <laughs> but she's awesome. I love her. It is. Of course you do. But yeah, so go to jumpstartyourbusinessweekend.com. Watch the video there. Get familiar. You can do the sign up right now for general registration or VIP. I want to see you there. Because I know yes. I can really help you all jumpstart your business and it's just going to be super fun. Yep. All right. Absolutely. Thank you for being here, Sean, and for sharing all yeah, your Thank you for having me. And we will talk to you guys soon. Okay. Absolutely. Bye. Have a good one.